hi guys uh, welcome to the video number 220 and uh, in this video we are going to talk about uh, how to run the actually the collection loops on the workbooks right this is going to be the part number three series number three and i have already uploaded two videos on that and uh, recently we have started a series actually on the you know on the loops like for next do loop and do until and uh, then the collection loops so if you're new to the channel what you need to do is you need to click on the playlist when you you know go to my channel and uh, you will see a category here called excel vba collection loops just click there and uh, find out all these videos under the collection loop right this is the vba collection loop and series one series two don't forget to watch them here we have actually discussed the collection loop how to use in the worksheets and in this video i'm going to talk about how to run the collection loop on the workbooks not on the worksheets right and there's another uh, series which you should not avoid if you're going to watch this that is called the excel vba loops example and here we have discussed do until do while and you, you can see here you know all these videos they, they are the very basic videos starting from the scratch and uh, if you are extremely looking for the advanced videos then these are the videos you know which you can watch okay so now let's come back to the uh, excel and in this uh, uh, in, uh, you know example what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about the how to run the collection loop so what we are going to do is I'm going to add here as you can see here my workbook name is book one so I'm going to uh, open couple of more workbooks right for example I'm going to uh, open um, the excel file uh, maybe from uh, maybe we can create the you know the files for example let me just uh, it's very strange I don't have the excel files on my desktop um, so let me just save them um, you can save them or maybe you I mean just like that I mean you can keep it as it is because to understand the code you really don't have to uh, save the files but let me still save it now so let's just keep it the name called a okay now you see guys uh, what we are going to do sometime what happens uh, in your code you need to actually you know scroll from one book one book or uh, workbook to the another workbook now if you ask me the reason reason could be anything really for example you are going on the you you have opened 10 workbooks and uh, in all the 10 workbooks you are going to the sheets and you know copying the data from there compiling the data in one major file major excel file right that could be the reason or maybe you want to see that if this particular workbook is open then it should immediately get closed right out of all those 15 20 workbooks right so you know the purpose can be anything but we will understand this that how we going to use this collection loop right so now let us quickly run the code and uh, write the code here uh, so i'm going to write here uh, workbook collection loop now if you have watched the previous two videos then you would understand that basically you know these collection loops they have a one very uh, a particular you know a very very actually uh, you can say standardized kind of a format in the syntax right for example they talk like this for each and then do you write the singular object single object you write here okay in and then the collection object collection or you can also say plural you know the plural of that single object right now this is I'm telling you you know by my own it's not that you would see somewhere in the Google right I'm just trying to tell you just trying to make you understand you know uh, uh, on how actually I understood the concept right so if you talk about the previous loop which we have made in those videos I was talking about collection loops there what we did we created a loop called for each worksheet in worksheets and then next right and between this we have written the code you can go ahead and watch those examples I'm not going to talk about those videos over here now in this case where we want to access the workbook one by one because you can have 10 workbooks open right now in our this uh, you know uh, in, in my machine you know you see that I have opened a workbook where I'm going to write the code and uh, the another one is the book one right so I'm actually going to write the code in the book one and the book, book uh, the another workbook which is a it is also open so let's say we want to access their name we want to retrieve their name one by one so how are you going to do that right so in the same way like we write the these collection loops uh, for the worksheet uh, you write the same with the same concept you write the workbooks for each workbook in workbooks and then next right 
So this is what exactly we are going to do, right? So we have a lot of collection loops. For example, you also have a loop called for each chart in charts, you know, next, right? So, I mean, there, there are, there are a lot of, lot of things uh, which you are going to learn in the future. But right now we have just started with this, uh, uh, you know, we have just started with this actually uh, the two loops, worksheet and workbook. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about anyways, these uh, charts and all that stuff. Right. So, uh, let's go ahead and write the code and then you will understand. So this is what exactly I told you guys, um, for each workbook in workbooks next, right now. The point is, if I'm going to run this right away, for example, let me just run it. You see that it will say that variable not defined. It is going to give you the error. Now, workbook is not a variable. It's a class, proper class, which you can even click here on this object browser. And if you, the moment you write here workbook, you will see that, you know, it is going to give you a complete class and then you can scroll it. It's all the properties in the methods. For example, um, let's just, let me move this down you can see here this is the class called the workbook and the moment you select this workbook these are all the members of the workbook members of the workbook means that you can all you can use all these property in the methods you know also they are all associated with this workbook class so it's not actually a variable right so but the point is you can't really access these classes directly that's the rule in the vba so you have to declare a variable so what we are going to do is we are going to declare a variable now you can choose any of the variable you can write i j k l m what whatever you want to write but generally i you know prefer to use this wb word right because I think that becomes more readable. That's the only reason. Otherwise, you can declare whatever you want, right? As far as, as long as the naming convention rules are, you know, you're falling. For example, you can start, you, you cannot start anything with the number. You cannot uh, use any special character in, in your, you know, these variables. Anyways, that's an entirely different topic. We are not here to talk about the naming conventions. We are here to talk about the collection loops. So this is what I'm going to do, dim wb as workbook. Okay, so here again, you see that this, this is the important thing. You you don't have to declare it as an integer or byte or single or you know boolean because they are not the data types now. We are actually going to deal with the objects. So objects means that the moment I declare WB as workbook, the methods and the properties, the, all the members which I showed you here in this object browser, you know, they all are automatically going to be transferred to this WP. So you can see here that the moment I press WP dot, I'm able to access all the properties and the methods associated with my workbook class. And that is why we, you know, declare them. When you declare them like this, the deem WP as workbook or as worksheet, those classes, you know, whatever the properties and the methods uh, in the VBA are defined to them, they automatically get transferred to your object variables, right? So you can also declare here something else. Maybe you can declare here, let's say, uh, x now you know that x is not a vb keyword it's not a function it's it's nothing it's your own creativity you have created it right the moment you press x dot you see that you will start seeing all the properties and the methods right so that is the reason so let me just uh, remove this and uh, keep this as uh, wb okay so now what then uh, and yes so obviously for each workbook now instead of the workbook you will write here wp right you don't have to change this the collection object that remains as it is here it is not going to change this is something you can use it here but this single object you will have to you know declare it like this that's a rule okay now i'll tell you one thing uh we wanted to get the uh workbook names the file names right so what i will do i will write here message box wb dot name that's a property property means it tells you about the object right it tells you about what color it has for example what is the color of your cell or maybe what is the name of the sheet what is the name of the workbook uh, so these are the things which you know which tells you about the object and they are called the properties right so and uh, when you press dot you know the sign of that property is also you can have a look it's basically this sign this symbol having a hand and you know that's like something you have a envelope or, you know any document like in your hands right so that sign means that it is going to be a property okay 
So now we have paid this wonderful code. Now I'm going to run this and see what will happen. Before I run, remember I have got two Excel workbooks opened. One is this where I'm writing the code and the another one is A. So the moment you write the code here, run the code here, you see that this is my workbook name where I'm writing the code and I'm executing this. And the next is your a.xls6 right i don't think so there is any other uh, any other third sheet so if i press f8 i go to the enter and the macro finishes off right so that means that automatically this loop is so powerful that it can even go to the different different workbooks right for example right now i'm just only uh, using the message box you can also go to those workbooks right um, I'll show you. Uh, let's just open some couple of more workbooks. So let me just open the blank ones. So I'm going to write here some more workbooks here. So there we go. Now you see that uh, this is going to be the workbook bo book three. Okay, and uh, one more. Let it. Let me create one more. And this is going to be your work book four. All right. So this is where you have written the code in the book one. And if I run this quickly. You see that I got the book one, I got the A, I got book three and book four and that's it, right? So we have got all the workbook names. Now, if you want to go there one by one, not the message box, you don't need the message box, then what you will do? Then you can simply activate them, right? So you will write here wb.activate, that's it. Remember wb, wb is your basically object, which is, you know, as good as workbook. Right, because you have declared this line now what will happen let me um, run this on the f8 mode now you see that the book one is the the workbook where I have written the code okay so the first part it is going to activate the workbook it is already activated so you will not see any changes here in this it's it is still the book one the moment you click on this next have a look now look at this guys in the background what is changed now your workbook new workbook is activated which is called a.xlsx we didn't we are not doing anything we are just you know running the loop i am not specifying here that activate this workbook you do you see anywhere i have written workbooks and in the bracket a.xlsx.activate of course not right i have not written any name so look at this now again it goes to the next workbook this is so powerful we use it a lot whenever, especially in compiling the data from the different different workbooks, right? So this is going to be the book four. And now because there is no other workbook, so the loop is going to finish, right? So now this is exactly, I have used it in many, many of the videos, which are really very super advanced level of videos, right? And maybe I think you can go here, um, somewhere here, workbook handling, uh, let's just, uh, find it out where is that playlist and i can show you there i have used a lot of lot of uh, in in fact in the collection loop itself you can see that we have created a lot of uh, loops here these are all the examples you can go ahead and you know watch uh, all these collection loop examples let me just click here and there we go these are the videos basically how you know how to display the sheet names export excel files to pdf there are a lot of things and most of in all all of these videos we have used these loops so now you got the idea of what is a collection loop so i'm sure if you go ahead and you know now watch all these intermediate and advanced level of the videos you will understand it right so these are all the playlists which you can uh, watch and they have the different different targets they have the different different category subject because we are trying to cover almost every topic in the excel excel vba ms access and ms access vba just to make you awesome right so uh, and don't forget to watch this uh, playlist as well deal with the workbooks if you click here uh, you would see here seven videos and these are all the videos you know uh, where we have i mean used the loops as well all right so uh, i guess that's it guys and uh, this is the end of this video 230 and uh, i will be back with some more basic videos with some more advanced videos till then if you have any questions after watching this video don't forget to leave your comments i will definitely get back to you on that right thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe